Amen. Well, glory. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. Amen. Well, let's stand up and open up in prayer. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have allowed us to come together one more time to share the living word. Now, Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts upon mine of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, I thank you in advance, God, that your word will minister to our hearts and cause our understanding to be enlightened, that we will know what is the hope of your calling and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. Now, Father, I give you all the glory, honor, and praise in advance in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome to New Life of Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. You may be seated. Amen. We thank God for this opportunity to share the word of God with you once again, because I believe that we are in the, the last days, the last of the last days. There's so much going on in the world right now, and God wants you to be equipped in every area of ministry, every area of your life. And what we're doing right now, we're doing an intense teaching on the Holy Spirit, Amen. Right now, we're doing, we're dealing with the Holy, the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a gift to the church, and the gifts to the church. I mean, not as gift, but and the gifts to the church, Amen. So, uh, I pray that what we say today will help you to understand more about the Holy Spirit gifts that God has given to the church, Amen. Because this is where this is what we need to gain our understanding from, Amen. So that we can grow and mature as Christians, as children of God, Amen. So let's go ahead on and let's get started, Amen. Glory to His name. Now. We was we was on on last week. Now I'm not going to be doing a lot of preaching. We just mostly most we're going to be doing today is teaching. Okay, okay. So we go we're going to look at some areas that we talked about on last week. We're going to go right into our lesson for today. As we started off talking about we started last we ended on last week on talking about the prophets. Amen. The prophets. You know, there's a, a lot of there's a, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of people that say they're prophets. Just because you can prophesy don't mean you're a prophet. Because God commanded the whole church to prophesy. So that don't mean you're a prophet just because you can prophesy. Amen. Well, let's get it. Let's get it. See, God has set some in the church, first apostles, and then says secondary prophets. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 28. Chapter 12, verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And let's go ahead and get into this lesson. Because I believe that we are all going to benefit from this. Because we are all learning. Amen. No one knows it all. I definitely don't know it all. And I'm not going to pretend that I do. Amen. But what I do know, I'm willing to share. Amen. Glory to God. So in 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 uh in uh first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter twelve, verse number twenty-eight says, and God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets. And I just I wanted you to see this in the word, that way you know that it's there, amen. First apostles, secondary prophets. Amen. Secondary prophet. And then look what it goes on to say. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. 
then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Amen. We see that God has given up, God has given all of this, these gifts to the church, to the church. Amen. And so So let's get let's, let's just see. now let's look at Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. We're talking about the gifts to the church. Amen. The Holy Spirit gifts to the church. Amen. So in the book of Ephesians, chapter four, let's start reading right here, verse number. Verse number 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 11. And he gave some apostles, there it is again, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now get this verse number 12, because it's very important. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You see, this is why it's so important that the gifts that God ordained to operate in the church take their position and and do the work that God has given them to do or to, to follow the assignment that God has given them. Amen. Because it's going, it's right now in this hour, it is so much needed. It is so much needed right here in this hour that we're in right now. Amen. We're talking now, 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 now look here now. Because see, there, there, there are two there are two uh, prophetic gifts. There are two prophetic gifts. Now, now get this now, prophetic gifts. One is the gift of being in the office of a prophet. Now that's a gift that God gave the church. Amen, that's a gift that God gave the church. The other, now the other is the speaking, is a speaking gift, which is called the gift of prophecy. Now, just because you can prophesy doesn't mean that you are a prophet. Amen? Because that's not what, that's, the word bags up what I'm saying right now. Because I, see, I hear a lot of people prophesying, but I don't see the evidence of a prophet in their lives. Amen? Because when, you're, when a prophet prophesies, that what he prophesied comes to pass. Amen? Read again. Amen. Amen. So, generally, general prophecy referred to speaking under the special inspiration. Amen. Speaking the special inspiration. So now we, when we come there, when we, when we understand it, when we, when we can come together and understand that not every just because you can prophesy, that don't mean you're a prophet. And just because you're a prophet don't mean that you're above anyone else. You still, you still a part of the body. Amen. We all still need one another. We all still need one another. Amen. So now, is now look at this now. Because it is it is a special ability to receive and communicate and what you call a, a, a mandated message. Because see, a prophet, he, he, he's, he's, not only, he's not only a prophet. A prophet operates in the realm of authority. He also, he also one that declares and decree. Amen. And we see that, we see that God, that we see that God had sent him for that purpose. It, in this point, uh, the, the definition applied to the special leadership. He's a he's a, he's a, a leader. He's in the part of the leadership of the church. Amen. That's why that's why it's so important that the, that the church open up the door to the fivefold ministry gifts in these last days, because this was going to strengthen the church to be able to carry out the assignment that God had given the church. The, prof, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, 
they are all a part of God's gift to the church, not just a pastor. You know, the pastor, well, I'm, I'm the head, this is my house and I'm running the way I want to run. Well, you out of order. Amen. I, I just have to tell you, you out of order. Amen. That's not what God designed. That's what, that, that what man designed. That's not God designed. God sent in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Amen. To do what? To perfect the saints, to strengthen the body of Christ, to edify, to encourage, to build them up, to mature them. Amen. Okay, so now, but a person is not a prophet just because he prophesied. Paul told us, Paul told the whole church to prophesy. What do you mean, Pastor? Look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. Because you see, we got to get our hearts and our, our thoughts in alignment with the Word of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And look at, let's just look at verse number, let's just start with verse number 1. Verse number 1. Amen. We just read verse number 1 right now. Amen. And it says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye all, get this now, that ye all do what? Prophesy. Now who said that? Paul said it. Amen. Paul said it. Amen. So Paul, if Paul expect the whole church to prophesy, then I believe he was being led by the Spirit of God to, to speak this so that we can all be at so why are we encouraged to prophesy? To bring edification and exhortation. Amen. To encourage one another. Amen. Now, 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 now let's go, let's let's look at this, let's look at a little bit more now. Because you see, when we come to this place where the gifts begin to come together, then you're going to see that God is working. You're going to see God at work. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter, four, chapter 14, verse 1, one more time. Because you need to see that God set in the church. God caused these gifts to manifest. What does it say in verse number four, 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 chapter 14, verse number 1? 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, Follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye, what? May prophesy. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the whole body. He's talking to the body. He's not just talking to the prophet. He's talking to the body. That means that you all have been given the opportunity or the gift to prophesy. Amen. But as I said, that doesn't make you a prophet. Amen. Glory to God. Now then look at uh, chapter, uh, verse, number 30, verse number 31. Chapter, chapter 14, verse number 31. Still in the same book. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 31. And it said, For ye may all prophesy one by one. Who is he talking about? He's talking to the church. Amen. That ye may all prophesy one by one. Then why? That ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may be, that all may what? Learn and all may be what? Confident. That all may learn, that all may be confident. See, God knows exactly what he wants to do. It just so happened that people have taken matters in their own hands to do what they want to do, leaving the word of God and, and following after the tr tradition of man. Making the word of God of none effect. Amen. So we have to we have to see we have to see what God is what God is saying to us. You see, but Paul indicated that not everyone was a prophet. How do you know? Let's look right here in first, let's look at uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 12 again. Back it up. First Corinthians chapter 12. Now, let's look at verse number 29. First Corinthians 12, 29. Amen. And it said, are all prophets, I mean, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? See, Paul, Paul, knew, Paul knew what he knew what he was talking about. And because he knew what he was talking about, we should learn a lesson from this. Amen. Ourself. We should learn a lesson from this ourselves. Why? Because you see, if we're gonna if we're gonna 
uh, progress in the things of God, we need to know the gifts that he placed within us. We need to understand who we are as a part of the body, a member of the body. Not a part of the body, but a member of the body. You're not a part, you're a member. So we need to understand who we are as a member of the body of Christ. We need to understand what, what, what gifting that God has placed within us so that we can uh, cultivate those gifts, so that we can kind of cause those gifts to mature. Amen. Glory to God. And so we so we, we need we need to look at that. We need to see what God is saying. Amen. See, the difference between a, a prophet and, and prophesying is apparent in 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 in, uh, in in the following. Look at this. Let's look at this scripture right here. Acts chapter 21. This is going to show you the difference in a prophet and one that's prophesying. Acts chapter 21. Are y'all still here? Amen. Good. Me too. Acts 21. Now let's start reading verse number 8. Acts 21. Begin to read verse number 8. Glory to God. And the next day, we were... And the next day that we were of Paul company, departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip. What was Philip? Who was Philip? Philip was an evangelist. Philip was an evangelist. Amen. It tells you right here. Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven. What do you mean by one of the seven? The apostles, they chose how many? Seven. They chose seven to set them apart for deacons. Remember? And that's what he mean of the seven. Because these he was one of the seven that was set apart for, for deacons. Amen. Now y'all remember reading that somewhere, right? Okay. Now now, now notice what he says right here. Look. What we at? Verse number one now? Huh? Okay, I'm just want to see if y'all keeping up. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so he said he, he so he was uh, one of the seven, and 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 abode with him. And there were, in other words, they stayed with him. Verse number nine. Then the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did what? Prophesy. See, that show you right there that everyone can prophesy. That don't mean they're prophets, but everyone can prophesy. And there's a lot of people right here today who call themselves prophets and prophets. And, and, they, and they just, they're stepping into an office that God then assigned them to. And and and, uh, and you see that they, they, they're going to hurt themselves spiritually. Amen. But notice what said, verse number 10. Verse number 10. And as, and as we tarried there many days, there came down from Jerusalem. Amen. Yeah, I'll get it in a minute. There came down from Judea. Glory to God. Certain prophet named Agabus. Agabus. Now he was a prophet. Amen. He was a, identified as a prophet. Right here in the Bible. But the girls, what were they identified as? Just someone prophesying. So that show you the difference that not everyone is a prophet just because they can prophesy. Amen. But that don't put but now, now don't get me wrong now. There are some women prophets. But the Bible make it plain right here that these girls were just prophesying. Amen. They were just prophesying. Now, now look at verse number 11. And when and when he was come to, when he was coming to us, took Paul and Gird and and Gird and uh, bound his hand, his own hands and feet, and said, "Thus said the Holy Ghost." Thus said the Holy Ghost. 
so shall the Jew at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this garment, this, this garment, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now see the difference of a prophet? A prophet, he foresees and release warnings or he release uh, what you might call a, 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 a word of, of encouragement uh, 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 or you might say it like this a word of direction he may put you give you certain directions amen but he gave Paul what did he give Paul right here he gave Paul a warning because he said this girdle the owner of this girdle when he come into Jerusalem is going to be what Look what it said now. Bomb. Huh? It's going to be bound. Amen. In other words, he giving Paul a warning what's going to happen once he got to Jerusalem. Amen. Once he will, once he made it into Jerusalem. Glory to God. Amen. So Philip, Philip daughters had the, the speaking gift of prophecy. They had the speaking gift of prophecy, but they wasn't prophets. Amen. But Agabus was a prophet who not only gave prophetic message but held a leadership position in the church or, or amongst the, the, the church leaders. Amen. See a prophet he holds he holds an office where as a leader. Amen. God used him in a in a leadership role regarding Paul's ministry. Agabus gave Paul spiritual directions regarding what would happen in Jerusalem in verse in Acts chapter 21 verse number 11 amen these are the two gifts these are these these, these are the gifts of being prophets and and those are the speaking gifts we just that's not what we just talked about because see the women they was just speaking gifts but then Agabus came along he not only spoke but he gave instructions. He gave directions. Amen. Now y'all see that, right? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. This is a this is confirmation. This is this is confirmation in Acts chapter thirteen, verse number one. Acts thirteen. Acts 13, here we go. Look at verse 1 through 4. Amen, amen. Amen. Acts chapter 13, verse number 1 says, Now there are, now there were in the church that was at Antioch, certain, knows what he said now, prophets. Certain prophets. Now he didn't say people that were prophesying. They specified, he said, certain prophets and teachers. Amen. As Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger and Lucas of Cyrene and Mania, which was which which had, which had been brought up with uh, Herod the teacher. And saw as they ministered to the Lord, verse, verse number two, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, knows who knows what happened now. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul. Who was he talking to? No, he's talking to the he's talking to the prophet that was here at uh, at Antioch. Verse number one, talk to the prophet that was there in Antioch. Now notice what he said right here now. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Amen. Who's who, who who is them? Barnabas and Saul. Amen. God called them. Now he wanted he read he read to separate them. Okay, so now where prophets and teachers were used in the leadership capacity to to guide Barnabas and Saul into the special ministry to which God 
had called them. Who did it? The prophets and the teachers. They directed Barnabas and they ministered to Barnabas and Saul to put them in the right position where God had called them. Amen. Where God had where God getting where God getting ready to use them. Amen. In the Old Testament, people went to a prophet for guidance. <clears throat> the gift of the Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit in filling uh, uh, in filling <clears throat> The gift of the Holy Spirit in filling was uh, not just given. It was the presence of God. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is not just something that we receive, but we receive more than just the gift. We receive the presence of God. Amen. And so we need, to, we need to understand that because the presence of God was shut up in the holy of holies because of because of the until because of the death of Jesus. We all have the opportunity now to be. We all have the opportunity now because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We now have access to the presence of God. Because before Jesus died, before Jesus came and died, huh? The holy of holies. Yeah, the, yeah, not everyone had the presence of God. <laughs> Amen. It was it was kept in the Ark of the Covenant, that's right. It was kept in the Ark. Amen. In the Holy of Holies. Amen. But when Jesus came and died, when Jesus came and, and, and laid down his life, Amen, he made it possible so that we all can experience the presence of God. That we all can walk in the presence of God. That we all can be a partaker of the presence of God. Amen. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, God made it. God made it as such. That's why Jesus came so that so that we will not all perish. Because those that want to understand who God is have the opportunity to do so. And how is that? Through Jesus Christ. Through accepting his. His, his coming, his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. See, we all have the opportunity to accept what, what happened. Glory to God. Amen. So now, so now we see here, now, now look right here, because in, in Acts, in Romans chapter four, Romans chapter 8, verse number 14. Romans chapter 8, verse number 14 says, because see, the Holy Spirit was a, he was a what? He, he came he come to lead us and do what? And to guide us into all truth. And now that's what we're going to see right here. Amen. Amen. Because see, as many as are led by the Spirit, see, as a child of God, you're not led by the arm of the flesh. You're not supposed to be in a way. But since you now become a child of God, you're now led by the Spirit. You're now led by the Spirit. Amen. For as many as are led, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are who? Sons. They are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. See, as as God as God has called us, as God has separated us, and we acknowledge Him as our Lord and Savior, we are no longer uh, outsiders. <laughs> We're not orphans no more. That's right. We're not orphans. We're not bastards. We are children. We are sons. We are daughters of the Most High God. Whew. Now get this. Now, don't, we can't leave this out. And we've been called to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Amen. And the Bible goes on and says in, in Ephesians chapter 1, far above all principalities and powers. Amen. And might and dominion. So we've been given a, a position that the world don't have. How do we get that position? <clears throat> By acknowledging Jesus Christ and accepting him and, being, and, and become children of the Most High God to be led by the Spirit. See, the prophets, the prophet gave guidance. They gave instructions. Amen. 
they had the presence of God, so they had they they could they could bring they could they could give guidance through their prophetic insight. Amen. They could give instruction. They could give direction. But someone just had just have the speaking gift. The speaking gift can only do what? Can only edify, exalt, encourage, build up. Amen. That's the difference in one that can prophesy and one that is a prophet. Amen. And that's why God said now we all have the opportunity to, to, to come in God's presence. Just like the prophets now. Why? How? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through his death, burial, and resurrection. We all have access to the presence of Almighty God. We all have access to the presence of God. We all have it. Yes. Glory to God. And aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you have access to the presence of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know I am. Amen. It is no longer it is no longer necessary to go into the to go to the prophet to receive guidance, even though people still do. But it's it's not that's that's that it's not necessary no more. But that that but that that doesn't that doesn't disqualify them from being prophet because God is the one called called to be prophets. Amen. But it's not necessary for us to seek out a prophet to get instruction, to get guidance. How do we get guidance today? We seek the face of God because we now have access into his presence. Amen. We now have access into his presence. So now we can seek the face of God with boldness. Amen. We can come before his, we can come into his presence with boldness. Amen. And we can call upon his name and he's not going to kick us out. He's not going to deny us. He's going to hear our, he's going to hear our cry. Amen. He's going to hear what we. He's going to hear our cry and, and glory to God. I, you know what I like about this? You know what I really like about this? I like that God. God don't have any favorites. I like that. God don't show favoritism just because you might be a prophet and then he might be an apostle and you might be a pastor, you might be a teacher or you might be a evangelist. God looked at them all as just gifts. Because he created them. He created them and he set them in the church. Amen. Man didn't set them in the church. God set them in the church. I tell you what man did. Man ran them out of the church. <laughs> and then there are some that didn't go, but, they, but they're not using their gifts. They, they, they're sitting dormant. Not using their gifts, not being used. Amen. But that's that between them and God. That between them and God. The New Testament give give no record of believers seeking guidance from uh, prophets after the gift of the Holy Ghost was given. Amen. But before they did sought after prophets. Remember when 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 Saul when Saul was sent out to find his donkey, his father's donkey, him and his him and his servant. I don't. I forgot what scripture it is, but is it is it uh, uh is it uh, uh second? Is it set, first Samuel, second Samuel? One of them. I, I I can't remember exactly which one it is. But but as they was going, God gave Samuel a word saying about this about this uh this 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 man Saul because because uh Israel was crying out for what? A king. Because all the other countries had king. They don't know they didn't have a king. They didn't want God ruling over them. They would rather have a king like all the other people, like all the other countries, all the other nations. Amen. So they rejected God and God gave them what they asked for. And he was and the prophet he he, he went to the prophet and the prophet said uh, your, 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 the, 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 the donkeys that you're seeking has already been located. But I need you to come stay with me a while. I got, I got something I need to share with you. And just in essence, what's what, what being said here. Amen. So today, we don't have to run to the prophet for guidance. Amen. Although they, sometimes when you're in their presence, they may have a word for you. Amen. They might 
have a, a, a word of, of exhortation, or they may even have a, 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 a prophetic word for you straight from God to direct you in the way that you should go. Amen. I know I, I, a prophet told me, he told me when uh, I, I, I just gone, just started going to this, this ministry and I didn't have nothing. And this prophet looked at me and he said, he said, God want to make you wealthy. <laughs> and I said, yes, that's me. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. I said, I said, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I said. <laughs> Amen. And uh, because that was God, that was just confirmation of what God had told me. But listen, folks, God confirms his word with signs follow. Amen. And that word, I have never been broken another day since I heard you that word came from God first, then the prophet prophesied it over me. I have never been broken another day since then. I'm I I am i am I'm I'm not rich financially, I'm not rich. But I'm not I'm not broke neither. Amen. But I believe God, when God said, when God said he's gonna make you wealthy, I believe he's not just talking about finances. I believe he's talking about every area of your life. Amen. Our marriage, our relationship, amen, our families, our children, our health, amen, our, our property. Everything that everything that God has given us, it has God's sign on it. Amen. And so we need to, we need to look at it that way because God God is God is the one that's directing us. Amen. So when 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 people go to prophets these days, they're going not because they have to. They're going because you know some might some might say that you're too lazy to pray. <laughs> You too lazy. You too lazy to go on your knees and 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 and, and seek the face of God until you get the, receive the answer that you uh, are looking for. Until you get the, the the answer the answer that you're looking for, whether yea or nay. God can say God can say either way, either or, yea or nay. Amen. And but it, and instead of instead of going on your knees and spending time with God yourself, you rather find your prophet and and let him prophesy over you. <laughs> a prophesy, excuse me, prophesy. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Amen, amen. You know, God is so good. God is so good. When we understand what God has given us, when we really come to understand what God has given us, we're not gonna we're not gonna uh, take it for granted, folks. We're not gonna take it for granted. We're gonna cherish what God gives us. Amen. The Bible says, in uh, is it the work, the the words spoken, the words spoken by a prophet under the divine inspiration are called prophetic. Amen. To prophesy means to declare openly. Words from God that exalt, edify, and comfort. Y'all got that right? Y'all need to read. You need, you need to hear that again. Okay, I'm gonna read it one more time, just, just, just for you, for you guys' sake. The word spoke, word, the words spoken by a prophet under divine inspiration are called prophecy. Prophetic. Now, get this. The prophecy means to declare openly words from God that exalt, edify, and comfort. Amen. So now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 3. It reads, but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to what? Edification for exaltation and comfort. There it is. Now I didn't put this in the Bible. 
It was there when we started, when we got, when we got started today. Amen. God put that in the Bible. Amen. So, so we see that we see that God is showing us the importance of the gifts and which gift. You see, God wants us all to operate in the in the prophecy gifts. This is a gift that we all should operate in. Every one of us. Because Paul said, God, Paul said, I desire that all should prophesy. Amen. And it was backed up in the scripture that all should prophesy. Glory to God. Amen. So now, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 24 and 25. Verse 24 and 25. But if I prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, is he convinced of all? He is judged of all. Amen. Verse number 25 says, And thus are the secret of his heart made manifest and so and so feeling so falling down on his face he will worship God and do what report that God is in you of a truth in other words when God reveal your heart's secret The one that is receiving is going to humble himself and he's going to begin to worship God, begin to praise God, begin to thank God because he see that God is in that servant. That's in that man or woman. Amen. Glory to God. So one of, so one of, the, one of the purpose of a prophet is to bring people to repentance. You ready to repent? <laughs> One of the gifts of the prophet is to bring people to repentance. Because a prophet, he's he, he, he's not uh, he's kind of he's he's, he's kind of bold. He's, a prophet is pretty bold right. in his proclamations. Right. Amen. And he and he and he's not and he's not uh, he's not been, he's not going to be one to hold back when God gives him something to say. He's bold and he and he's courageous. Amen. And so he's uh, he's not he's not he's, he's not going to be one easily bullied because of somebody's face or someone daring him to say something. He's going to stand up. And he's going to declare what God has said. Amen. In Second Corinthians chapter twenty-four, verse nineteen, see one of the prophets. See in Second Corinthians chapter four, chapter uh, twenty-four. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 24, verse 24. Excuse me. 2 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 24. Why are you telling me? Why are you trying to make me go look for a, 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 a chapter 24? <laughs> Amen. But in 1 uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, 24. Didn't I just read that? I did, didn't I? Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 24. 2 Chronicles chapter 24. Now we're cooking. 2 Chronicles 24. All right, I... Now we 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 doing it now. Second Corinthians twenty four. Look at verse number nineteen. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord, and they what testified against them, but they would not give ear. See, even though prophets can be used to bring people to repentance, but that don't mean 
People are going to repent. Amen. You know, my next, God has already started to deal with me by next year's message. I'm letting y'all know that right now. He's already dealing with me by next year's message. And it's, it's, it's going to be something no, people ain't going to want to hear. Amen. But, and, and, it's going to, and it's going to go a whole year. Whereas <laughs> old people go. <laughs> but what can I say? I, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey God regardless. I'm going to obey God. Amen, amen, amen. He, yet he, yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. In other words, bring them to repentance. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. They would not hear. They would not listen. They would not pay attention. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible referred to prophecy as a, as a great gift and more to be desired than the gift of tongues. Amen. Follow after charity, desire spiritual gift, but rather that they Brother, that ye what? Prophesy. Brother, that ye prophesy. Who, who's he talking to? He's talking to the body. He's not talking to just uh, a, a certain group of people. He's talking to the whole body. Because God wants us all to prophesy. He wants us all to understand the gifts of the Spirit. He wants us all to walk in alignment with the gifts of the Spirit, with the Word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so now, that, uh, let me just show you, let me just, let me just take you over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to show you that. What time we start? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, 2, and 3. An hour ago, I got to close this out. I gotta close this out. But let's go to first Corinthians chapter 14 first. And we'll close it out with this one. Because I don't want just the the mess with mess with my with my system there. No, I still got eight, I still got six, seven minutes. Trying to rush me off. <laughs> Don't do me like that. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You know, God is so good. God is so good. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Are you there yet? No. I'm still, I was in chapter, I was in second verse. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, 2, and 3, and it reads, Follow after charity, desire spiritual guilt, but rather that ye prophesy. Amen. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto who? Man. Men, but unto God. That's why Paul wants everyone to prophesy. He wants everyone to, to speak in tongue. Amen. So they can talk to God. For no man understanding him, howbeit in the spirit he speak what? Mysteries. He speak mysteries. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to what? Edification and exhortation <clears throat> and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified, no, speaking in an unknown tongue edified himself. But he that prophesied edified the church. Amen. He that prophesied edified the church. Amen. That's right, Jeremiah. That you, you, boy, you, y'all keeping up with me out there. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Amen. But now, <laughs> he's like, keep preaching. Okay, I will <laughs> for another five minutes anyway. <laughs> Today, Amen. Glory to God. So now, in in, in First Corinthians chapter uh, fourteen, verse number five says. I would that ye all speak with tongues, 
but rather that ye what? Prophesy, for greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with the non with the with tongue, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Amen. That the church may receive edifying. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 39, wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. See, he's telling you, he wants you to prophesy. He said, therefore, wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. And forbid not to speak with tongues. Amen. Covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Amen. The Holy Spirit is always in control of true prophecy. Directed intention, direct intention by uh, because if you know if it's true prophecy, it's coming, it's coming by the Spirit of God through Jesus. Through the, it coming through the Spirit of God. Amen. And this is why God wants you all to draw close to him and he wants you to begin to prophesy. Prophesy. Amen. Don't, that, that, that just because you prophesy don't mean you're a prophet now. Amen. Uh, don't mean you're a, prophet, a, a prophetess or a prophet just because you've been given the opportunity to prophesy. Amen. Because God knows your true gift. That's why God wants us to study these gifts so that your <clears throat> so that your gift will be revealed to you. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that your gift will be revealed to you. Amen. So now, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse number 1, 2, and 3. It said, Now concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. See, God doesn't want you ignorant concerning spiritual gift. He wants you to know what he has placed in you as a body, as, as a member of the body. Amen. So now concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand <clears throat> that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God do what? Call it Jesus a curse. See, if you if you're walking in the Spirit of God, you can't you can't stand you, you it's hard for you to speak against Jesus. It's hard to speak against what he what he stands for. Amen. It's hard to speak against righteousness. It's hard to speak against holiness, especially if you are a true born again child of God. Now, those that play in church, they will say whatever they want to say. <clears throat> But if you are a true born again child of God, you won't say nothing against the Holy Ghost. You won't say nothing against Jesus. You won't say nothing against God. Amen. Because, why? Because he lives in you. And you lives in him. Remember what the scripture said in, in, in John chapter 14, verse number 7, thing? If ye abide in me, in my word, uh, uh, or something like that. My words, <laughs> my words abide in you. Amen. Friend. Glory to God. Lord of words. Okay. And it said, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. See, if he's in you, how can how if he if he's in you and you abide in him, how can you how could you speak evil of him toward him? It's hard, isn't it? You can't do it. Amen. You don't, you don't want to. You don't. You're not going to grieve your own self, your own spirit. Amen. But uh, it's, uh, it's I, my time is up. So now, those of you that enjoyed this message, <laughs> like I did, and this is now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick right back up right here on next Tuesday night. Amen. So tell your friends, tune in. We'll be picking right back up here on Tuesday night again. Amen. The Lord's willing. <clears throat> but it's time for us to prepare, prepare to receive our offering now. Amen. It's time for us to receive the offering. Amen. Those of you that are on, with us online, you want to sow a seed, you go to uh, LarryBurgerMinistries.com. You're going to type that in for me back there, huh? Amen. 
uh, LabrickMinistries.com and plant your seed, amen, of faith. Now, don't forget, y'all, I'm getting ready to go to Pakistan, November. It's been, it's, 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 uh, everything is on the go, amen. They had all that, they had all that big flood over there, and they was going to postpone it to February, but uh, the Lord encouraged us not to postpone it, but to go. And so we, we're going to be going over there, not on the first as we intended, but we're going on the, on the fifth, amen. Going to be leaving out on the fifth, going to Pakistan on the 5th of November, amen. And we'll, we'll, be going, we'll be going until the 16th. We'll be going until the 16th. So we are asking you that would help us out by sowing a special seed, amen, for, for the trip to Pakistan. Please uh, go to my website, LabrickMinistry.com, or you can you can you can uh, uh, just write a check and put it in the mail. We got plenty of time to get it, and that's PO Box four one seven nine one three, Sacramento, California nine five eight four one. Amen. Again, that PO Box four one seven nine one three, Sacramento, California nine five eight four one, and make the check payable to Larry Ministries. Our New Life in Christ Church. Amen. And I thank God for you. Now, we are a nonprofit ministry. We have a 501c3 status. You can write off your gift during tax season. Amen. So don't forget, we are 501c3 status. You can write your gift off during tax season. We need to raise another, we need to raise twelve thousand dollars. Amen. I had a few people that already promised that they're gonna sow a thousand. Amen. And so I don't know. I don't normally ask for money when I'm doing this. I normally just take up a regular offering. But I'm just letting you know, if you want to sow a seed, you want to help us out, you can do so by going to my website, LibrarianMinistries.com, or you can write down this, this mailing address, and that way I'll get the full effect of what you're sowing. We'll have to share it with PayPal or somebody. Amen. And that's Post Office Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. God bless you. We love you. Now, Father, I pray over the gift you are speaking to the hearts right now. And God, I thank you that you are speaking to the hearts of your people. Lord, this message was not given by accident. You gave this message, Father, because you want to encourage your people. You want to strengthen your people. You want to empower your people to be all that they can be in the church that you have planted them. And now, Father, I ask that you would touch their hearts and that you will cause them, Father, to be a, a, a giver, a generous giver, a hilarious giver into the kingdom of God to support this ministry outreach to Pakistan. God, I thank you for it right now in advance in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank God for whatever you do. Whether big or small, it is welcome. We love you. God bless you. Go ahead and sow your seed. <clears throat> Amen. Glory to God. Now, if you are born again and you backslidden, you want to get your heart back in right standing with God, I want you to say this prayer. If you've never been born again and you want to get your heart right with God for the very first time, I want you to say this prayer. Just, say, just repeat this prayer with me. Don't say it because I'm asking you to say it. Say it because you want to get your life right with God. Say this, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and I believe you died for my sin. Today I confess my sin and I acknowledge you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. If you said that simple prayer, God's angels right now, I mean, that's rejoicing taking place right now in heaven because of you. We love you. God bless you. If anyone needs prayer right now, I pray for you. Everybody okay? Good. Let's pray for these with us by the internet. Father, we pray for those with us by the internet. We release our faith on their behalf, Father, that this message will penetrate their hearts so much, Father, that they will want to share it with others. 
And then, Father, they will be strengthened. And you will be glorified because they heard by the Spirit what you were speaking to their heart. I thank you and I bless you for the Jesus name. God bless you. Thank you. See you Sunday. We'll see you on Sunday. God bless. Bye-bye.